day one of this lockdown 1.0 actually when i realized that you know we have conceived and in i mean usually the first reaction of people would be like hey you know we are pregnant but for us because because of this corona situation everybody was you know really scared how the future is going to be everything was looking very uncertain so for me it came as you know something it's like oh this is not something i want i mean being pregnant in such a scenario so uh, the first thing that came to my mind was like maybe this is not the right time let's go and abort it and amit because he has been like very supportive of you know when it comes to when to conceive and all so he was like okay let's let's go by how your intuition is and so he was very much supportive of in that sense so then uh, finally we discussed it, it with my mother in law and she was like why don't you go and see this family gynecologist and just take an opinion rest i mean you can you know decide later on so then we decided to go and meet her and then after talking to her i know i don't know i just got the intuition let's i mean things are not that uncertain and especially uh, us because we still have a lot of privileges seeing how the society is so it will not be that challenging so we decided to finally go for it so because of the lockdown initial this first trimester amit managed to stay with me even if he was there for only one month of leave but he got his leaves extended so that was a good thing for both of us so once my first trimester ended he had to go back to his post like when it comes to pregnancy it's like ha huh, some family doctor or some known gynecologist if it's there then you are just sure you'll be going with that person so this family gynecologist we visited uh, the second time so i was feeling a bit of low bp feverish kind of a feeling and then my partner was like okay let's go and check with her what's because i had no idea about all the discomforts that a woman go through during the first trimester and then both of us we decided we'll you know visit her so my mother in law also she's like okay let me also you know come with you guys and then all three of us we were talking to her and then suddenly uh, so she checked my bp for her it was a normal thing because she is seeing every other women who's pregnant and going through these changes for me it was something new and then after checking she's like hey this is all normal uh, and you you have to be really strong and then to my mother in law she said you know what she's going to give you a lot of pain because she's acting so sensitive and she she'll not be able to bear you know childbirth pain and all then this was something i didn't like because for me i was like you know you have to be like a bit sensitive towards women who are you know experiencing it for the first time and uh, and then uh, because my mother in law uh, and they had like family wise they knew who has come for treatment and all so then she started telling stories of other women in our own family and this is something which really you know made me feel angry i was like if you are telling stories of other women to us then it'll be other way around very soon and both me and my partner we we just decided no the, she is not going to be you know our doctor and then because of the pandemic uh, there was a lot of restriction and we didn't know how to you know really go one by one and search look for who's the you know who would be the best care provider for us and during the same time uh, i think i was talking to preeti and she uh, you know mentioned saman uh, saman's name to me she was like you know this is my uh, college mate who has you know gone through birth village uh, this thing and uh, why don't you talk to her because she has done this natural birthing that time i had no clue what is natural what is normal so then i thought okay i'll contact her through facebook and i was like i don't know what kind of a person she is whether she'll write back or not but then still i was like okay if i'm not writing anyways the answer is you know no let me just try so i wrote to her and then she was so kind that she was like okay can we speak on phone i said yeah so both me and my partner we spoke to her and uh, soon after listening to her you're like okay this is something we want to kind of really explore so from her i got to know about birth village and then i went to birth village website page read some of the birth stories and it was really moving and i never like imagined that birth could be so empowering and uh, this is something i realized from the stories and i was like okay maybe i want to you know do this like many many women and uh, so but one of the apprehensions both of us had you know because amit was there we knew that he's not going to get his leaves like it'll be 
one percent chance that you know he is going to get it so that situation we knew and then at that time flights were not operational so he's like okay how would we go so like let's keep it open and let's keep some backup option this government institution or something and let's just go with the flow and uh, so this was third month of my pregnancy we were like pretty sure let's go by this and then we decided to do a consultation with priyanka we did like 40 45 minutes consultation and the clarity that she had on like all the questions she the way she answered she was so confident and i just felt this instant connection like both me and my partner we felt like okay this is the thing that we want to do so yeah so but yeah we continued our journey with this uncertainty of you know traveling and then the big question came when i shared it with my parents we were like who's going to accompany you because generally you can travel anywhere alone but when it comes to a child and you know your body will be healing in initial 30 40 days who's going to take care of you in such a you know land where you know no one so then it was like okay let's let's think about it let's keep thinking about it as the time comes but let's just book the slot and let's see how things unfold so for me it was more like you know taking one day at a time so when it came to decide on like who would be my birth support person who's going to accompany me so first thing in, on my mind was that it is definitely not going to be my mother not going to be my mother in law because uh, i saw them you know giving so much of unnecessary knowledge of their time which i felt uh, was kind of very contradicting to what i was you know researching and learning so i thought no maybe i don't want this level of contradiction when the baby arrives and then uh, later on i was like who is the best person who can be there i would say it was also a lack of option there that there was only one one option left that was preeti but still honestly i was like like all my family members they were like you know preeti but like she can she can un- manage well with the language and the place and all like these are all the positive sides but one thing is like how she is going to cook this postpartum food she can cook ayurveda food this that but postpartum food is different and then how she is going to take care of the baby she doesn't even know how to handle a baby she has never you know really experienced a newborn you know? so there were a lot of questions which remained i would say till the last day even a bit of it after we have arrived here so i think i would say that we just we knew that it it is not going to be perfect but it will make some sense we'll be able to you know navigate somehow and uh, for me also then i realized that you know for me also this is for the first time i have not handled any newborn so i was like okay maybe we both are learning it together then mm-hmm. as far as these doubts are concerned that whether i will be able to take care of her or the baby or you know postpartum and all this this was not my this was not my worry the only thing which came to my mind that the entire world has come to a point where we don't know what is going to be tomorrow so for me the most important worry is that how to save my sister from this overly me- medicalized world and the 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 way in which the entire the you know entire pregnancy is looked at the the birth is looked at so it's not a disease first of all it is a body's you know it, it's like a, it's a i mean it, it's an it's a it's a motherhood is an institution and it's also an experience so if you look at it like of course somebody's bo- someone's body is going to change a woman's body is going through a huge transformation but you see the ent- like what priyanka is saying that what my mother and mother in law they are telling her what is it to be the mother and you know of course those things so i think my main uh, hunch was to get her to a place where where she feels at home because this is going to change how she's going to feel further and her life is going through that transformation this is a setting of a foundation of a next generation you know for i mean, I, i was seeing the bigger picture the care and i have not handled the newborn and my mother still think that i cannot make a tea so th- you know this is like this is this has to do with women and i feel that it's at every level when you're single you can do certain things when you are you're married they will ask they the society will tell you and even if these are jokes and even if these are humor i laugh at it 
but at the same time i am uh, I, i do get angry about it because it it puts you in the situation again like like you know they they it's a profiling of a certain kind that because i have not been a mother i don't know how to take care of a newborn because i have not gone through this i don't know what it it, it is to feel the pain of somebody you know i cannot handle a newborn like i, I do get a little annoyed by this that i have to be a biological mother of someone to feel what is to what is it to have a child so i it's it's like we are you know we are talking a lot but i think we are constantly fighting with these ideas in our own head and so this birth has shown us to me and to priyanka that you know and i did not believe that i mean to to stick with oh you know i have never taken care of a newborn i don't know how to take care of a pregnant woman like it was never my apprehension I was like you know she's fit she's fine she's not diseased she she knows how to do it and we just have to get her to kerala and then rest will you know like the let, let the universe decide you know who are we i'm just like i'm just a wire to to this so i never put a lot of focus on myself or not less focus on myself but i was like if this child has chosen me to be the part of this journey then i am going to be there so i think that, that that affirmation i had in my head this was in august when we booked our tickets and we still had like almost two months to go mm-hmm. and we were pretty excited so we'll connect with each other on video call every day like four five times and then she is like you know when she has a plan uh, some travel plan coming up so she'll be very excited about packing and all <laughs> and i am just the opposite i'll be like hey we ha- i have to travel i'm excited but then packing is something that i don't really enjoy that i do the very last day and then she'll be pushing me calling me pushing me have you kept this for baby this that i'm like okay you keep it you keep that also then she'll be like i've kept this 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 so it was like all this excitement and uh, finally when we reached here so obviously the excitement slowly will come to normal when you are staying together so obviously things are different when you are at a distance but when you are together you are seeing each other like 24/7 and then you have to work like cook clean these kinds of thing then it it becomes a bit oh you did this i did this and you know these ki- kind of sibling quarrels so we we faced it all so there there would be some days she'll be like i'm not doing this i don't want to eat but then i am pregnant and i'm you know feeling double hungry and all like okay then i have to be you know i have to cook on my own so for her i would say she didn't really see me somebody who's pregnant or somebody who's different she was i think for the whole time she was seeing me as before so there were so initially this was like a bit uh, uncomfortable for me because i was getting all the attention from my mother my father my brother and then suddenly there is no attention how come and then i'm expected to cook i'm expected to clean my room i'm expected to do all kinds of things which i was not doing because my mother was there <laughs> and then slowly uh, oh, and then i will uh, call my parents i'll tell them they'll ask me who did what because parents are parents no matter how big mm-hmm. how old you become then i'll like she she didn't do this i had to do this and then they'll call her they'll you know they'll be like hey why are you not taking care of her then obviously it'll be you know she'll come to me why did you tell this to them okay so this is like you know this childhood uh, drama that you see was still going on when we were here uh, but slowly we also came to you know some equilibrium is like okay she's she is good at this thing she enjoys doing these things so she'll she'll continue to do this and if i i like cleaning the room and you know mopping and all so they'll be like uh, i'll be doing this so there'll be no agreement disagreement quarrel kind of a situation so till i would say till labor pain i was pretty much on my own because and i think uh, the way she saw me uh, like before really helped me to remain independent like till the last day of like childbirth i was pretty active doing all kinds of work and then uh, you know going for a walk and then like initially i was expecting her to go with me for a walk so she was going but some day she'll be like hey i don't want to go after a point she just left then i was like hey but walking is good for me <laughs> then i was like okay don't go i'll go on my own so i'll be going for a walk every evening on my own so this was happening just like one day before 
like the same day the labor pain started i was going for walk all alone so but yeah that really helped me to stay independent emotionally physically obviously and i really took it as something that you know if i'm i'm able to do this much then i think i'll be able to do like she is my birth support and all but in a way mentally i was preparing myself to remain independent uh, and and that helped me during you know labor pain actually i found that more than the the actual mundane day to day work i think it was communication which i felt that which really made me realize that my communication with others and my communication with my own family member and especially my sister is so different than others you know like i'm someone who will say a thing on a on your face like hey i don't like this you know but for me to say her the same thing it was like going through a big cycle she's pregnant she is emotionally this her hormones are like and what about my hormones <laughs> and it's like what about i am feeling this pain i am i you know like i have a pms how to to take there are two women one is pregnant one is going through like you know all of that how do i manage it i cannot do everything and she has to understand that. but then i think it really helps to say these things so i think that's where uh, in the i remember our first consultation i was overwhelmed because she snapped me last night like before meeting priyanka she almost told me that it would have been better if i would have called my mother in law and that was for me like good good for you but you know why did you waste my time she said you can pack your bags and leave then i and luckily we had a we had a consultation next day i was thinking overthinking i never met priyanka i had no idea who is she and you know how it's going to be and we were like in the consultation room and then she's like hey guys you have a questions that's like her style i'm like से समथिंग आप कैसे हो ये इज लाइक नो नो जस्ट आस्क क्वेश्चन आई लाइक बेबी को देख लूँ ये वो एंड देन आई सेट आई वॉज लाइक लिटल एप्रीहेंसिव दैट इट्स अ क्लिनिक एंड वी आर कमिंग एंड यू नो ऑफ कोर्स पीपल आर बिजी वी आर इन पैंडमिक वी आर वेरिंग मास्क यू डोंट इवन नो हाउ आई लुक लाइक आई लाइक यू नो सो ऑल दोज थिंग्स आर लाइक लॉड ऑफ एप लॉड ऑफ एप्रीहेंशन वैदर शुड आई स्टार्ट इट्स अ पर्सनल एंड बट आई एट वन पॉइंट आई फेल दैट इट्स it's for me it's like nothing is personal in that sense everything has a larger meaning it is so if i share if i don't share it it's not going to help us in the labor she will know what is it who we are so better to you know sh- show your skin on your shoulder then she knows what preeti can do and what preeti cannot do you know so i found that for me to be honest you know and there is a saying that you know wear your skin on your sh- on your on your uh, what is this part elbows it's is much easier for me than to hide i cannot hide what i feel so i just opened up to her i said uh, i don't know whether i'm i should be saying this but i have some questions actually we are dealing with lot of house issues so she's like okay and i said but all these has implications i don't want to say that how much work i should do but it is affecting us so uh, and then we got into the the question of space the question of communication and i think these are also very very fundamental things when it comes to labor because when she's having contractions she does need her space at the same time how much support is a good support do i need to hold her do i need to make her paralyzed do i need to make her feel independent what should i tell her should i cry with her so it's it it was like a like a rehearsal before the labor and i thought that that exercise and was so important with priyanka because she exactly know how emotionally we are located with each other and you know where she felt because at times during the labor she felt that okay i'm losing out and she's like you go out and take a walk and maybe drink something and then come back and i had a breakdown when she was it was so hard for me and i was like that time i felt like oh my god you know why can't i do this something for her you know to make but then that moment is i realized it it's not that her vulnerability when she was pushing but that, then that uh, reaffirmed me that you know she is she is independent she has to do it and she is my sister but she is an individual and i am there as a support i cannot like i can feel what you know i can see the pain but i need to be there as firm and i think that's in that entire labor for me 
I think the actual meaning of support was getting cons like you know making meanings. It was not uh, it was not something you know you read a manual. What is it to be the support person? And even though you know for husbands and I feel for man like just because you're a husband you don't it doesn't mean that you gonna be the excellent support person because it's your child. It, it never ha it doesn't happen like this. And then. I, I think the most of the women they go through trauma or postpartum actually it's making more sense to me that they are always there their support person and suddenly everyone finds their life and the mother is left with the baby and you know I'm, I'm happy that my brother-in-law is away because now this connection is giving them time to be have the same bond you know otherwise if he would have been there I, they would have been managing some mundane things and the, com the the conversation would have been like flat Ki, you know he's washing nappies or he's doing this and that and at the end of the day they don't have anything so it has I think the support doesn't it for me it didn't start in the labor room and end in the labor room I think it's it's a continuous process that she feels supported Look, okay I can do this but I think it's 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 kind of you know really helped me to understand what is it to support somebody and why just labor I mean what is it to support and you know where to take your where to let go and where to hold I think that's what it means to me for me that you know what actual support means one day I just you know messaged Priyanka saying that is it possible if any baby mother like any uh, pregnant women around the same due date coming and staying in Kochi so maybe we can you know stay nearby so there is like some support and at that time, Preeti's plan was not really confirmed. So I, in uh, on that, uh, this thing, I was like, okay, maybe I'll have to do it all alone. So that was also a reason that I messaged Priyanka asking if, you know, some if you can connect me to somebody. And I think she, uh, you know, approached this uh, BV mother group, some WhatsApp support group, where she posted, you know, uh, this thing, uh, like I wrote a whole message saying, this is the scenario and I'm looking for, you know, a house and all. So uh, fortunately, Nishana, who's one of her BV mother, who had a V back some two and a half years ago, uh, she connected with me and she was like, hey, I have a whole house open to you and you can just stay. And I'm like, hey, like this is something uh, I was experiencing for the first time. I'm like, how can somebody just open up her house, especially during, you know, this time when people are talking about social distancing, mask, coronavirus. I mean, this was a very huge uh, support, I would say, somebody really offered. Then uh, still, I was really doubtful whether to really go about it or not. Because staying at somebody's place, uh, especially for a longer period, if it's like a week in 10 days, you can just say, okay, I'm coming. But if it's for longer period, you are not sure about, you know, whether to really take it up or not. So I said, uh, you know, so I said, okay, I'll just, you know, confirm to you in a in a day or two and I still kind of uh, looking was kind of looking on this rented apartment thing and all but somewhere deep down my intuition said you know what let's go by this because you can stay outside but the support that you know you might need might not come you know when you're staying outside because she herself has gone through natural birthing and all so philosophy wise she would be able to get you and then the kind of support you might need later on after the baby arrives, you can get uh, get it from that person. So then this is how like we kept, you know, the connection going on. She's like, hey, whatever you need, the stuff, babies, clothes and everything, don't worry, I have everything. Don't bring anything, even your own clothes. Don't worry, I have, you know, all the clothes. If you are okay to use mine, you can take it. So she was like very generous and even till today, even like if some days we are not feeling well, she's like, hey, you want me to cook for you in case you just let us know. And then we tell her, then she'll, you know, like the family, her mother, everybody, they're like so kind and so supportive. So that has been like, I would say this is BV support group, this mother support group, which is like really helped me. In one of the discussion, it, it appeared before also, and I got this clarity that, you know, how it went smooth for us and it would be difficult for somebody else. I think this question is set back in five years before when we had to face difficulty when there was a lot of drama you know like why do you want to go to the south and you know I think five years before when I was really unwell and Priyanka and I decided that 
I think we want to go through institutions, uh, you know, which are Ayurvedic in nature, like who provides Ayurveda treatment. And we don't want to go through Western institutions of any kind. You know, and we want, I think that was, I think that the calling for us was five years back when we decided that trip and that was a lot of apprehension. Like, why do you want to do it? So I think it's a question about women's body. What is it that they want to do? You know, how they want to do the things. And childbirth is, of course, a major event in a woman's life. So, and it's, it cannot be your own thing. The child is about a husband and a wife. It's about a family. It's about not about just your family, another family. So yeah. So once the woman comes to that stage of your life, the I think the dynamics changing changes and things become complicated. Why? Because there are two families involved now. But I think uh, for us, I think we questioned our own parents. Like you know, why just mother-in-law? Why our own mother? Like I think the patriarchal thing is not just parents-in-law. Your own parents who tell you. Like what you can choose, whom you should get married, what you should wear. It starts from there. It starts from, you know, like with my niece now. That today I say, oh, she's a girl. You know, in the video, she should not sit like that. Why her, why her legs are not covered? You know, there should be something on her head. So it starts from today. It's a setting of the foundation and how we, you know, what we want her to be exposed at. So I think the, the first question, people like I was shocked when when people asked me what is the, like my mother is the first person who asked what is the gender of the child so when she was born I'm like she's gone through a lot of pain she's your daughter you have taken care of but we did not even check that you know it took us an hour to even and it was certainly at that moment for me it felt like you know that the gender I mean I'm not saying it's not important it does it 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 changes everything you know and it's a part of your identity but it should not it changes people's attitude it changes what, how people are going to talk to you how and that was my mother so the patriarchy is not somewhere else the patriarchy is within our own families and it's been a constant fight for us that you know we we want to do things our own way we want to choose and if we would not have done that together we would not have been it would not have been possible and for us we had a lot of clarity about Kerala, like, you know, we want to come here, we know, we, we don't speak the language, we are outsiders, but we always felt a sense of warmth when we came here. We always felt supported by people. I, I mean, I'm not saying there are all good people in one good place, you have, my, but I've had very amazing, I, I think I've grown up, you know, in Kerala. I've seen myself, I've found myself, and a lot of healing has happened to me in this place. A lot of family healing has happened to you know to all of us. So yeah, I think I think that this decision is not like just happened. I think it is like back then it's been constant. Challenge was that whenever I'll give her also oh, mostly the classes you know I think the batch I was in it was really it came to me like okay tomorrow seven or five thirty is the class and then. At such short notice, when I told her, she was like, hey, I have this plan, that plan. I was like, I don't know what plan or what not. You are going to attend this. <laughs> so uh, then finally she did. And after one class, and then I'm constantly like checking on her on messages. Are you there? Are you there? I cannot see you on video. I hope you're listening to what is going on. And then because she is sitting in Bhuvneshwar, I'm in Delhi. And then we are, it's not like, so everybody, all the couples, uh, they are like sitting together next to each other so one can see like okay are you attentive or not but here in this case I didn't know so I was constantly checking so after first class uh, I think Preeti had left maybe uh, some few minutes before the class ended and I was, then I called her I was like why are you not there why you didn't attend the full class then she's like she gave her you know reasons and but and then yeah I created a huge fuss about it I told my parents she's not serious about classes how she's going how she's going to go with me how she's going to support me and then later when she uh, you know opened up about her experience as you know after attending this first class how she felt during the whole class that really changed my perspective and then I realized that it's not really the same thing when you attend the class as couple and then you attend class as you know 
sisters especially like my birth experience if i talk about so i would say uh, you know i would appreciate preeti that she you know uh, behaved with me in a manner that i stay independent and not really depend on her for my whatever basic needs so uh, that kind of kept me motivated to do my, things on my own so uh, the day my contraction started um, i think pre- when i told preeti she was like uh, she woke up and then she was not able to sleep she was like okay now it's going to increase increase now the pain is going to increase the intensity and the frequency uh, then i was like no no you sleep i'll manage because i was able to manage this was like early labor contractions which were not really painful and then so the whole time uh, till the time we reached birth village uh, my contraction were like getting stronger so the next day also in the daytime i was like you sleep because your sleep is you know as important as mine if you won't sleep you will not be able to you know support me uh, and then she's like yeah but i'm not able to sleep and like you take some medicine some ayurveda medicine you just sleep <laughs> and uh, i was like because this pain i have to manage on my own uh, you cannot really do anything if i need something i let you know so we reached birth village around 12 12:30 in the night time and uh, so when priyanka checked she is like hey you are just 4 cm dilated why don't you go back i said i'm not going back now i want to stay here and uh, but i'll be on my own she was like are you sure i was like yeah yeah and then the whole night uh, i'm i was sleeping and then in between the contractions were coming and i was making all kinds of noises then preeti will just suddenly wake up and then she's like do you need something I said no you just sleep i just need this you just sleep i don't want you to wake up because you know if you are there looking at me i'm feeling distracted and uh, these contractions i think i just have to focus on you know keeping my eyes closed let it come and let it go it's like one contraction at a time like dona how she trained us in the workout classes so she's like okay and then till morning i in between i was sleeping and then this coming so uh, yeah in a way uh, i'm seeing that i kind of my focus was more on like her that she sleeps well and so that i was like okay because it's going to you know go really intense and stronger and at that time i am going to need her more than you know now so her rest is more important so i think the whole focus of mine was on her and uh, like when the transition phase really came the pain was like more at that time i was like you are not going anywhere else you just stay there <laughs> you bring hot water bag and you know just put it put it this way put it that way it was definitely pain pain was there because uh, you know that's how you this human has come out so the whole uh, uh you know my perception towards pain was really changed because of the lamas classes because earlier i was just seeing that you know pain is something which is you know going to drain you down but at the same time how you see pain is also an important at the last minute i did not know what is where where you know where to look for what if they going to ask me something so she did even though all the classes but i think people are people habits are habit so she changed she packed the bag for the baby and finally i when they were asking me in the birth that can you give me a cloth and i ended up giving her a new swaddle and which they cut and that you know so i think uh, for me it's it's and uh, it's really funny i'm not a very makeup person but i packed all my cosmetic my rose water and my brush and this and that and i thought i could get a morning <laughs> i'm going to have a perfect morning when i'm going to brush my teeth and you know it's going to be like i will have breakfast then the contractions will start <laughs> so i really thought that it's going to be like this but i don't have a memory from where it was mild to where it became unbearable because i'm like when this happened you know so i think the time in between was like was just too little a window that i could just book my last breakfast in cranker was and i think it started catching up and then it was becoming intense and she was going i think she was going in a trance completely you know to tell her anything hey can i remove your a clip because it's hurting my chest she's like no don't remove anything i'm like so i don't know what level of preparation one can do for it so it's been 12 days now after her birth and i would say nothing really big has changed mm. between both, both of us both of us yeah <laughs> so for like um, 
almost like seven eight days I was really taken care <laughs> I was on my bed everything was served right then and there whenever I'm asking now it's 12th day and I am expected to do my things on my own like before it's like okay now it's it's done it's over <laughs> but support everything is done you, you know do your things then I'm like yeah slowly pick, picking it up so yeah so we are coming to back as like sisters not she's mother of somebody or yeah you know so it's like we going to remain oh. sister you have a child it's our child you know so i am also working so you should also work <laughs> but yeah i mean i'm i'm sensitive to that fact that yeah she our body has gone through a change and she needs time for healing and all that but uh yeah sometimes i'm also feeling tired i'm like you can also do your work it's as simple as that so it doesn't really have to change anything i guess you know sometimes i'm like i don't want to do it and now it's on record <laughs> i'm so happy you know you birth anywhere it doesn't matter but i think for the most important thing is to really take care of yourself when it comes to your diet nutrition and all uh, like physical fitness and all uh more than that i think it's it's very important to create your own support group and you know to gain information which is uh, you know authentic because right now when you google you will get all kinds of answers to all kind of questions but you know to to find people who are doing you know uh, some sessions or you know who are conducting workshops on childbirth or you know especially this childbirth classes which sounds very fancy because that was not a thing some time ago but with i think with more and more information we are feeling more and more lost and it's very hard to find you know or make a difference which information is authentic and uh, you know we can follow and which is not so for example one of the uh, one of my friends is like pregnant and she herself she has done you know bms and she has you know attended some labor and all uh, where she was practicing so now when she is pregnant she is feeling that maybe i know everything and then one day she'll be like hey i don't know anything i was like why don't you find people like you who are going through the same journey because for me in my case like how i connected to someone she was the first one and then she uh, you know uh, forward for, forwarded me this poster of uh, heart in the tummy event and when i attended this event it was really it was a two days online event and luckily because of the pandemic it was happening online um and then i attended it and there were a lot of sessions which really helped me and especially the session which reba daniel conducted this was power of pregnant women where because before before that i somehow was feeling you know a lack of confidence in me because everybody is you know telling you what to do and what not to do when you are pregnant and you suddenly feel that your agency in on your own body is is not there and everybody is doing it you know with best of their interests and you know be- best intentions but after attending reba session i really felt that you know i need to be back on my track and i need to you know take my own things on my own hand so that really changed my whole perspective towards my own body towards myself and how i take this journey forward so i would and then from there like i connected to uh, divya deswal uh, and uh, like uh, uh, what's her name reba and then i attended priyanka session and then there are a lot of you know lactation counselors and all so that helped me to you know follow these people on instagram and then i found out that these people were doing a lot of instagram sessions which were free of cost so it's like all the information that you should be getting is is there it's just that how you join the dots you connect with people so i think uh, whoever is pregnant in this scenario in this you know coronavirus situation wherever you are wherever you you know birth your baby it's important you know you find people like you who are you know going through this journey on you know people who can actually support you there are instagram pages and free live sessions you can attend and actually uh, feel that you know you are not the only one doing this and feel supported is like is the main thing